Today we're in New York City with money relationship expert Helen Kim. Helen, thank you so much for spending the time to speak with us today. Pleasure. So you're an expert in financial relationships. Can you tell me what is our money relationship? How do we know whether we've got a good one or a bad one? Well, that's a very good question. Um, you know when you look at the outcome, yeah. um, how the positive or negative balances that you have. Mm -hmm. I would say that's the quickest way to know. And of course, you know, as many people listening are uh, business owners, that's probably the fastest way to learn about your relationship with money. And so are there things, so if we're business owners, we're earning okay money, mm -hmm. is there things that people do to sabotage? Is there stuff that we do to sabotage our money earning? Oh, yes, more? yes, yeah? yes. I would say the most prevalent things I see are issues of under-earning, uh -huh. which is the pattern of earning below your potential. Yeah. So you're not covering your needs and your wants. Okay. Overspending, which is, as it sounds, <laughs> you're spending too much. Uh, debting, which is really, really about the debting cycle. You're getting in and out of yeah. the debting cycle. So can you just explain a little bit more about under-earning? You've got a program coming out that's the, the truth about under-earning, what's it called? It's called Understanding Under-Earning. Okay, can yes. you give us, you know, just, I know it's a long, that your course is going to be long, but can you give us a little bit about that and mm. how can we understand under-earning a little bit better? Well, as it's the pattern of earning below your potential, you really start need you need to you start you need to start getting connected to your money, and there are many ways you can do that um, actually for free. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I do is to have people look back to their first experiences around money, mm -hmm. and remember so what's like their pocket money or, or pocket like money, tooth fairy. Or? Yep, tooth age fairy. three, four years old, yep. uh, because those memories are what we, believe it or not, carry up to our present wow. lifetime. Uh, one of the other questions I ask is, what was your mother's relationship to money? What mm -hmm. was your father's relationship to money? Because these things have informed your own relationship with money. Yeah, and what if they're different? So, as mm. an example, in my family, you know, one of my parents <laughs> spends a lot, one of my parents saves a lot, so it works out quite well. What if they are like that? How do? Well, you... as far as you are concerned, I don't know your relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. with money, but it could affect you the complete opposite way, or it could be that you are allied with with one oh. of your Okay. parents so it's just even being aware that your parents were it sounds like they were opposites yeah well I don't know <laughs> which you, you probably out. yes <laughs> maybe you balance them out hopefully <laughs> so it's it's really starting to get aware and connecting yourself to money because when you're disconnected from your money you're disconnected from yourself because what I say really is that money lies really between our inner and our outer worlds. We yeah. need money to exist in the outer world, mm -hmm. but it's really a result of what's happening in our inner world. So it's a great teacher. Mm. And what about the overspending? So mm. you just said something there that, you know, some people try and spend more so they seem like they're more successful or... Yes, that's competitive job, spending. Or, yes, yeah, that's okay. sort of what's known as keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. But when you're an overspender, you know, there are many things you can ask yourself at point of purchase, for instance. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can ask why am I really here? Mm. You know, what am I really shopping for? And what do you find when you work with your clients? What are they usually really shopping for? Well, many times it's an absence of love. Mm -hmm. uh, not feeling like you fit in, like you belong, yeah. so that's why you feel like you have to buy all the designer mm. clothing and the bling bling and the... Shiny, shiny. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So is again, you know, the competitive spending. Yeah. So it, it really comes down to emotional reasons. Mm. And do you think that, so is that the first cut that we should be doing, like making sure that we're slowing down that impulse? Exactly, yeah? exactly. That you're really um, creating a space between point of purchase and actual purchase. So are you saying that we should be like cheaper with our money or how do we work out how much not, we can spend? Yes, not cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's really understanding what your own needs and wants are. And you can yeah. start doing that right away by just even tracking your money, which you know a lot of people feel resistance yeah, to we that. Do it but with that's our businesses, but yes. maybe not for yes. ourselves. But then my question to my clients if they say, Oh, I can't I can't I mean tracking 
is well what's the resistance about because that's yeah. that's what you have to overcome and that's where you can start exploring well what is the resistance I have to really seeing what the reality is and is there an easy way to track this so should we be doing sure. it online or yes no you can just do it on your own you can just I mean I try and keep things very simple just yeah. carry a little notebook and a pen, pencil, and every time you purchase something, if at all possible, write it down. And that's also like a trigger not to spend as well if you have to it write is, it down, It I is, it is, yes. Yeah. And then I like to take the next step, which is really create a diary out of it, a spending diary. So what yeah. you're doing is maybe one day later, you sit down and you look at all the purchases that you made um, in the past day or in the past week, and you, you start asking yourself, what kind of mood was I in when I purchased this? Mm -hmm. um, does it have the same value that right now that I thought it had when I purchased it? Yeah. And you really start analyzing then, and then you can also start seeing, is this a need or a want? Mm-hmm. And how much can we spend on want? So, you know, we all like to treat ourselves occasionally. Mm -hmm. Is there like a percentage that you use or is it individual or? I think it's individual. Yeah? Yes. And that's what I love about this is everyone. And now when I start seeing that people are skewed towards a lot of wants but they're not covering their needs, then that's, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a, a topic issue. for discussion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what about, say for example, with our businesses? So how do we work out how much we should be spending for ourselves or on our business or those types of things. Is that another relationship thing? Like it's how really we... one and the same, I feel, yeah. is mm -hmm. if you are a, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, yeah. it's really an extension of who you are. It's an extension of your you. So I think you, you can keep this the accounts separately. So you're tracking mm -hmm. your own personal accounts, but you're also tracking your, your business accounts as well. And what else should we be doing? Do you find that women have a tendency to more to do something different to men, or are the relationships hmm. between men and for men and women the same? Or well, I think find? The first the good thing is women uh, tend to want to work at a deeper level on their relationship with money. They're more, yeah. I find in general, more willing to step up and say, you know, this isn't working. I'm, I'm not. I'm not really meeting my needs. I can see that. I can see the bottom line and I know I'm worth more. I'm just having difficulty asking for more and it just mm. scares me to do that. Um, men are much more apt to negotiate. Yeah. They are much more likely to step up and, and actually enjoy negotiating. Women mm. tend to step back from that. And what about tips for us if we are under earning and what if it's not our fault that we're under earning? What if we're in a profession where we can't control how much we earn? That's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, you know, my background is, is in the arts, and so yeah. I grew up with a lot of the starving artist mentality. Yeah. And what I started seeing, though, was that people who who wanted to make more money found a way to do that. Yeah. I know that's not just a perfect a answer. Yeah. Yes, but, and, and it might have been that they started a side business, maybe mm -hmm. they started a, a music copying business while they were also playing in, in you know, freelance orchestras and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, even people who play already have a very stable job in major orchestras I know have side businesses that are very lucrative for them. Yeah. So I think it's a, really, it's a matter of where your focus is. If you really do intend to make more money, I find that people find a way to do that. To do it. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me a little bit about debt? So should we have debt? Should we not have debt? Well, you know, there, if you're responsible, I think there are certain yes. kinds of debt. I mean, obviously, if you're paying for an education, that's something mm -hmm. many times that can't be helped. It's, it's just being responsible, though, for paying off that debt and mm -hmm. not going off on the I don't want, I don't need to know about it, I don't want to know about the debt and, and letting things, of course, snowball. And is there anything else that I haven't covered that you'd like to, that you think as small business owners that we really should be focusing on with our money relationship? I think you've done a great job of asking the right questions. Again, it's just really about connecting yeah. yourself to your money and realizing when you start seeing things that aren't going well in terms mm. of your own finances, look inside. Yeah. it's That's where it all starts. One more question, mm, sorry. Yes. Uh -huh. um, cash or credit card? So I've read a little bit in the papers about when people have credit cards that they find it easier to more easier to spend but if we're spending cash then it's more difficult to part with your money there is something about that i find you know the, the plastic it's so easy to to, yeah. to take out of your pocket it's not real money uh, it's not but but then again if you were tracking it's all going to be the oh, same okay, so if yeah. you're again if you're if you're at point possibly as 
as best you can point of purchase if you're writing yes. down everything. And it, and even if you're not, if you skip a day, it's okay. But as long as you know that you're <laughs> supposed to be tracking, day. yes, yes, <laughs> and that this is your focus again, yeah. focus, focus. Um, then, then I think you can't go too wrong. You can't veer too far off. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Kim, thank you so much for speaking with us today. You're so welcome. Well, I know I've got a lot out of that to help my money relationship. Helen, thank you so much for speaking with us today. You're so welcome. <laughs>